So I moved on after the Eubank fight, there were another couple of defences, and then there was what I think most of us would call the defining Nigel Benn fight. The ultimate Nigel Benn fight where you showed the fighting spirit that we all admired yeah. throughout your whole career, and that was Gerald McClellan. Leading up, you weren't supposed to fight McClellan though. No. I so wouldn't fight anyone though boxing. Michael Nunn was a six foot two slippery southpaw. And they said, fight Michael Nunn but take 100 grand off. I said, he's taking 100 grand off from the champion. And he said to my manager, Don King, said, if you don't, we're going to bring him in, Mike Tyson. I thought, we'll bring him on. I don't, I, don't, I don't move like that. If you want to bring him on, bring him on. So going into that fight, Gerald's statistics were unbelievable. 91.8% knockout record. Yeah. Most of those knockouts coming in the first or second round. The fight before you, he just knocked out Julian Jackson, a yeah. real tough man of the division. Yeah. So, you know, he was... I mean, were you scared going in there? You were going in against a guy that's just getting rid of people in no time. No. <laughs> More scared than nobody. Not scared of nobody. Not scared of, not scared of any man. In my weight division. And was there something, did he say something to your dad at the press conference that kind of got under your skin? Well, I feel nothing. It was not only that everybody had me to lose. Every paper picture you The lose. Sun, the Mirror, the, the Telegraph, the Guardian, you name it, today everyone had me to not have to be one, one, two, one, three. What? Nothing? Really? And that kind of beat me off. I said, you know, that, that's not me. And he said to my dad, I'm going to hurt your body. Oh. I thought you said to my dad, you're going to hurt your body. I said, my dad said, you've got to do what you've got to do. <laughs> I thought you said to my dad. And the different thing is like, I don't wish any kind of bad thing on anybody, but if you watch the, the documentary called The Fight by Our Lives, and his trainer said that he used to fight pit bulls. Yeah. Mm. And then he take up a Labrador's mouth yeah. and put it in a cage to fight these Dog. I mean, a Labrador, what's he going to do? And if his dog loses, he go and shoot it. You wouldn't know that. It's not, you know, it, it wasn't a nice man. Mm. I was pushing bad on him, but you know, at that time I was really, I was messed up anyway myself, because we, we, we cut out a lot of people, what I was going through myself. But I remember when he came out, I, I didn't have no fear, I just looked at him, he just looked like, he just looks slim. But he moved, the different things with him, he moved from light middle to middle to super middle, knocking everyone out. But it takes you about at least six to eight months. How do you forward this bit? You know, so, so the difference is it was like, it's like you about six to eight months to adapt to what, he just moved straight up. And, and not adapted to the way, maybe if he adapted to the way, he might have lasted a bit longer, I don't know. But the difference is I looked at him and I remember when we come out, I was just like, scared. He thought he was just going to blow me away. Mm. He thought one of the ligaments stretching my neck. The next minute, I'm out there, but I'm looking up. I'm like, I'm on the floor! <laughs> and then I got up and it was so funny, it was like a... So, what it was, it was like a... Um, I just got up and it was just like... I, I, I don't even remember the first round, it was just like all blurry. And then I got back to my corner. Then he mentioned, said, look at the state that you've got in me, look at the state of that. <laughs> really? Really, really, and then from that moment, something changed. Because if you watch the second round, Sonny in my subconscious, you watch, you watch something happens, something changed, and I'm chasing it in the round. Mm. Something just happened. I don't know what happened. It, uh, it was just like a, a, a front punches, and I didn't care. I didn't feel nothing. Something just went. It was like went into it. This is 30 seconds into the fight. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Ooh, I'm okay, ooh, yeah, that's it. So it doesn't look good for you at this point. Sorry, I don't need no help, I can get it myself. 
like, you know, oh, come on, look, 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 you know, you're not giving in time. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm all, and I'm all over the place. I think it's a bit crass, because the rest of the round, obviously, you did cut back at the end with a couple of punches. And this was the remarkable thing, I think, about Devin Asini's corner work, because any other... They're all going mad, they're all going mad. Like, you know, this like, this bit, and it's like, you know, so I'm like, I'm like, I'm like chasing him, it's like, you know, after you just done all that, so it's like, so something happened, it was just like, you know, so the end, so brilliant, just when it seems, it's like, you know,
Because everyone uses the odd you want to and cocaine. And they say, no, 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 don't want that. No, I like that stuff. No, 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 don't want that stuff. Don't want that stuff. Because all we black guys back in the 70s, all we were going to do was fall split, and that was about it. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else. And then they had this little fella, and then we just changed my life. Because I was like, I didn't care about fighting. So I had this little thing to take me away from, from my marriage problems and everything. It just took me away. It was just like I was depressed a lot of the times. I had one of these things. It changed my life. So, so that was all through your career? Yeah. From, from, from that Malinga fight? Yeah, from the Malinga fight. Yeah. So, I, I, I had a lot of gangsters like, that I used to like around with. Really naughty gangsters like yes, boys. For, all through my career. And you and you were smoking all this time as well. I mean, I should, shouldn't recommend this as a, as a way to get fit. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was so funny because I, I stopped for I stopped for about six weeks. Didn't start back. Didn't already in you. Know, just really, like I said, I didn't stop smoking. After the fight, I go back and sniff everything. Just, just let it go. So you carried on after the fight. Yeah. There were, there were, you know, there were a couple of good defences, um, and then, then you lost the title yeah. to Sugar Boy Malenga. You just, you just didn't see yourself. You seemed off. Uh, did you? No, were you ever the same after the there, there, there was a lot of personal problems outside the ring that really kind of affected me. All, all from a career, there's nothing, not one, one fight in my career that I had problems. Yeah. There was always something going on in my life, and I didn't know how to escape it.